Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm here with Jean-Guy de Gabriac and Hilton Lipkin, who is the GM of Alba Wellness Valley. And Hilton is one of our speakers next month at the World Spa and Wellness Weekend. And Hilton, I'm going to go straight into it. You're speaking with, on a panel, smart strategies to generate revenue growth. Key topic with the as we come out of the pandemic. Any nuggets from you and any, any advanced information that we can learn from now? Okay, so uh, only nuggets, as you mentioned. I'm not allowed to tell too much because we still want everybody to come and attend. So just well, a can, small, well, small there, you can You can expand yeah. so people looking, some, hopefully they can take away from this. No, I, I only follow the orders. Don't speak too much. <laughs> no, um, honestly speaking, Mark, I think, yes, you know, it, it's fantastic that this event's coming together. It's been a very tough time for everybody in the industry. I won't go on about that. I think we've heard it so many times. But there are many silver linings from what we went through. And, you know, one of them for us is that um, we have this all spa um, inclusive, wellness inclusive concept on our property. And during COVID, we had to find a solution because obviously spa and wellness was very much restrict, uh, restricted or closed. And uh, we actually changed the system and we found later that we actually got a little bit more business by offering some rooms with spa and some room, rooms without spa, which is completely against our DNA because we're very much wellness and we're very much all spa inclusive. And actually today we juggle with the two and we actually seeing a bit more generating revenue coming through from the spa side and coming through on the property side. So not what we wanted to do, but a silver lining. And there's actually something that even developed further from that, but that comes next month. But, to, but tell me, so you're saying that um, I could sign up as a, just a, a guest. And did you find that people who then did that, did you upsell them into spa treatments once they were there? Correct. It, it's developed into something new. But yes, before you only got spa, but now you can actually stay at the property as a guest and not have spa included in your room. Uh, it was all about room rate. It wasn't so much from the spa concept. It was actually from the hospitality concept, but it generated into something that's really helping us. You, you, you touched a little bit on it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I got to keep something to stay at the end of the month. But, <laughs> but, you but found, yes, you, you are you I could imagine a, a family or people coming because it's a beautiful location where you are in central Vietnam Correct. and going for the location. And then once they're there, maybe having the time to, to delve in that. And that, that work did it by and large. Correct. Correct. A hundred percent. But did you find that because obviously the cost lower, did you find that because some properties who have lowered costs just on cost have got the, if you like the wrong sort of, um, no. guest I guess that didn't spend did you find that happening or not really um again of course demographics have been completely mixed up it, it was really a case of survival so you know if if you would have guests coming for wellness and then not having wellness then what would they do uh would they buy would they not buy guests coming just because the room rate is actually very attractive and as you mentioned beautiful scenery as you can see behind me that, that's my property over there. No, no, no promotion here. I get into trouble. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, it's it's been a confusing time. But if we put it all together and we mishmash and mushmash and really analyze what's been going on, there are silver linings. But I mean, hey, we're all in the same boat together, and we've all seen crazy things from you know, like I said, demographics we would have never expected, guests we would have never seen areas that we would have never marketed to. But hey, in survival mode, you market to anyone and anything comes in and anything's taken. So I think we've learned along the way, which is good, very good. Okay, I rushed our introduction, I should fully into, introduce <laughs> our co host, Jean Guy de Gabriac, who is the boss of the World Wellness Weekend, and it will be in London co hosting the event. Jean Guy, have you but better let my French colleague have a word? Of course, that, thank you, Mark. You know, it's, it's a pleasure to, to uh, be on this conversation with you and Hilton today because Hilton symbolizes what the World Spa and Wellness Convention is all about. I mean, uh, from South Africa, he traveled and worked to Tahiti, Hawaii, Morocco, Mauritius, India, Thailand, Cambodia, 
and now in Vietnam. He joined the Fusion Group now as the general manager for Alba Wellness Valley, as you um, said, Mark. And I, I'd just like to take my hat off to the Fusion Resort uh, Group, which is super innovative, super uh, on the front line of uh, exploring a brand new business model and have for the past few years, uh, even before the pandemic, with all inclusive. Uh, based on the type of room that you get, you have a certain amount of minutes or certain type of treatments uh, that you can have at the, at the spa. There are always group activities that are offered. And this is why in the DNA of the group, it's all about inclusion and inclusivity. And COVID had to break that into a, a, a different business model. But it's, it's great to have you, Hilton, because you'll be sharing, you'll be joining us uh, on Zoom due to travel restriction, but you'll be joined by Anna Coelho, the director of spa of Rocco Forte Hotels in Europe, by Lasse Eriksen, the director of development of Ferris Bat in Norway, and a, a fantastic promoter with the uh, International Sauna Association and the vice president of the Augus uh, Masters, and Tara Moore, who's really uh, um, um, uh, a fantastic, very innovative also person from Ireland. She's the head of spa operations at the award-winning Galgorm. So interestingly enough, but uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not, um, how do you say, it's not a, a surprise. All of you share the same passion for elevating guest experience. All of you share the same passion for making the experience start with the team. And when they do that with their hearts and their full passion, then the experience is transformative. And all of you, are ambassadors of the World Wellness Weekend. You in Vietnam, Anna in Portugal, Lasse in Norway, and Tara in Ireland. A great bunch of people. So thank you for joining. No, oh, thank you, jean -Guy. It It's an honor to be here and it's an honor to work. And I think you know what I'm gonna say. We all have one thing in common, one team, one goal, wellness for all, wellness, wellness for all. Wellness Changing for all. the world through wellness. And Absolutely. We can Hilton, do it. Hilton, in terms of any changes over the, the last year or two in terms of driving revenue? Can any other tips that you that you might be able to pass on? Um, yeah, I mean, like, like I said to you, I think we, we're all marketing to different areas. Um, if we look from a marketing perspective, we've definitely broadened our horizons where, you know, we would look in one area before and now we're looking all over. And again, everyone is this, this domestic market where most of the people around the world, again, I'm, I'm sure you're going to hear this on the weekend many times from many different um, speakers, but, you know, we're all fighting so hard to get this international business where in some countries, not all countries, you have this very strong domestic business that can actually drive your business and can keep you afloat, which is our case. So, you know, it was a very big push on the domestic market and making sure that we have that domestic business. And it was enough for us to stay afloat. In fact, even doing well. So that, that was a major thing that, that, you know, we spent half our time working on, on England or France or America or wherever it was, and the other half on domestic. Now it's 80% on domestic and 20% outside because we're not even sure when they're going to come back. So it's really a different business model in terms of let's survive and let's really market to what we can and what we're sure is going to come. And when the others come, that's extra. Yeah. And how have you found the team, you know, um, in, in where we are in the, in the West, there's a lot of um, issues on recruitment, retention. Um, the, in most of our spa contacts in Europe have issues or many of them have issues with, with staff. How is that where you are? Um, I've heard that and I've spoken to many people and I've, I've been listening to lots of talks as well. Um, to a certain degree, we lost people in the hospitality industry in, in Asia because people lost confidence in the industry due to COVID. So people just did not see a future. So there, yes, there was definitely loss. And I think that's probably international. But in terms of recruitment, uh, we actually now back in business at the moment, and uh, we've just recruited quite a lot of people. We actually found five spa therapists within a week. Okay, 
given they don't have to have all the qualifications and they don't have to have 10 years of experience, we do that in-house. So it's a lot easier to find um, a spa therapist from that perspective. But we are actually finding people and they're not coming in saying, oh, we need more money, we need more security. So actually we lost people, but we're replacing them and it's not too difficult. I really thought it would be more difficult listening to everything, but in reality, we are finding the people. We are. And, and I remember that uh, you mentioned that 75% of the team was back. Correct. In fact, we never lost them. Uh, 75% of the team. It was actually quite interesting because we carried this team right through two years of COVID. And then the moment we started, we actually lost a couple of people, which was mind boggling. It's like, we've done everything to keep you on board. And then as we started, we lost a couple of people. Mm -hmm. I never understood that. But, but yes. One of our success stories is keeping I think the whole that's team. very typical. A lot of um, spas that I talk to in the, in Europe have, you know, they they kept people on during, and we had the furlough scheme here in many European yes. countries. And then, of course, when people came back, they they didn't want to come back into work, and so that's been a big problem where we are in the West. Yes. There's a there's a big trend that you have seen and that, that you were um, that you're looking into Hilton and integrating in, into your programming. That's environmental wellness. Mm. Uh, I know it's it's a topic that we will be uh, touching on on Monday, fourth uh, of April, with a great um, workshop, interactive workshop about sustainability. But tell tell us how environmental wellness is playing a bigger part in your programming at uh, Alba Wellness Valley um, in Vietnam. I think I think we all know that green wellness or environmental wellness is is a, is a hot topic at the moment. And because our property is out in the nature, and we have a lot of green around us, um, we we've definitely pushed towards doing more outdoor activities, hiking, barking, uh, tree hugging, breathing sessions in the forest. Um, actually, the start of this year, we planted 2,000 trees. Boom! It was a World Wellness Weekend activity. But yes, of course reducing carbon footprint while well, absorbing carbon footprint, uh, CO2. So um, for us, it's extremely important. And I think from a marketing perspective for any property uh, anywhere in the world, if you can do more uh, sustainable or, or um, environmental well-being activities, you have that element and that edge in terms of marketing, which we see everywhere, everywhere on every advertising thing that you look at and one thing that I wanted to mention I'm, I'm actually a judge as well for the um, the sustainability section and I, I was blown away with some of the concepts I'm, I'm passionate and I do a lot of research about sustainability I write articles and I work on some think tanks but some of the, the I can't mention names and I can't mention groups but some of the properties that I read through, I, I took notes and I took reference because there's some fantastic initiatives out there and it's in the spa and wellness industry. Yes, the big companies are doing their thing and they're all releasing their reports and it's all well and good and it's fantastic. But I think our industry, the wellness industry, the spa industry, we can definitely lead the way in doing some fantastic sustainable activities. And it's a fantastic edge in terms of marketing. So people should definitely go with it. Hey, and we're saving the planet at the same time. So it's a no brainer. Where it's a no brainer. I, Hilton, where would I start? I mean, even small things, is there anything that you've done recently or you'd even before that as a spa operator, where, where would I, where have you started? Where, where, where are the pointers here? I think some of the big things are um, obviously in terms of um, products. Where are your products coming from? Your retail products, your professional products. That's a very easy one. Today, there's so much research out there in terms of sustainable products. You know, um, covering, uh, I just heard that one of the big cosmetic international brands is going to scrap um, packaging in the near future. Yeah, that's a game changer. And if they can do that, the rest of the world can do that as well. So there are elements you can do, obviously, serving your drinks. You can be more organic. You can obviously not have plastic glasses coming out of the water machine, straws. But th those are very old concepts. And then I've heard of a lot of spas now using organic products in their scrubs. Yes, we've used coffee scrub for 10, 15, 20 years. That's always been there. But then we go and buy these beautiful products in tubes and we put it on the body. You can make that. You can take sustainable waste 
from the F and B outlet in the hotel or something, you can mix it in and you can try and make some type of um, some scrub. There are sustainable ways of doing it. So I, I would say the easy ones are to look at products and to look at sustainability in terms of what are you doing in the spa? How can you recycle products? How can you use different products? And then, they, I mean, it goes for a little farm in the spa. You grow your own herbs, you make your own tea. Easy, but it's a great seller, looks good, and you're saving the world. Instead of that packaging coming from the supermarket, it's a small thing. But if 400 spas do that, and they all grow their own little mint tea, and then it's fresh, it's organic, and it's there, it's a, it's a story, and we're not visiting the supermarket. I hope no one from the big food companies are listening in, <laughs> but hey, things have got to change. Things on, have got to change. On, on this note, Mark, I've, I've noticed that one uh, thing that really helps spas uh, kick it off uh, is, of course, when they look at all the different activities they can do with linen, with uh, detergents, with uh, organic uh, ingredients, with going paperless, electricity. The key thing after doing, um, um, looking at everything that they can touch on is to um, ask in the team who wants to act, who wants to participate, and who would like to be a champion. And then you leave that into the hands of the millennials, of, of the, the, the young generation, the 20-year-olds, the 30-year-olds who are passionate about this. They make it their pet project and they put all of their energy into it. So it's, it's really remarkable. Starting with the team, of course, with objectives, but starting with the team to act upon it. Uh, Hilton, one last thing before I, I, I believe we need to sign off. You are the second... Um, GM that I hear talking about, of course, uh, more outdoor activities, uh, bringing the spa outside, um, fitness, wellness activities outside, including tree hugging. I, I would never think that after COVID, I would hear two GMs talk about tree hugging as an activity. And the last one I, I heard this, the GM was saying, you should take five minutes First, look at the trees, find a nice one, and hug it for five minutes. I, I can assure you something will come in five minutes. If, some, if nothing comes out in five minutes, don't give up. Maybe find another tree, because the reason why nothing is happening with that tree is that maybe the tree doesn't like you. <laughs> Hilton, last... Um, well, actually, you won't have the last word, but don't, any other thing that, you would, that you've... Um, that you've done recently or would like to share before we see you again in London? Um, any tip or anything that you feel you can pass on practically? Um, I, think, I, think, I think the most important thing anyone can have at this stage is, is positivity. I think, I think, you know, you can do as many actors, you can go and hug trees and, and wait for reactions like Jean Guy has told us. Um, but I think it's just about being positive. It's about staying positive, about knowing that there, you know, this is going to happen. This is, this is a new world. We've learned a lot. I think we've all woken up from what went on and our, our little selfish worlds have definitely broadened. I won't go into detail, but I got very upset with some people around the world in terms of how selfish we've become as, as a population around the world as a, as what can I say, people, but I think we've become closer together. We've learned to work together to appreciate each other. And positivity is, you know, one positive person, another positive person, another positive person, keeping people happy. You know, wellness happy. Happiness is, is an important part of wellness. Hilton and of course, Jean Guy, look forward to seeing you both on the 3rd and 4th of April um, in London. Um, and if people want to find out a little bit more, it's worldspawellness.com. Um, I look forward to seeing you, you in person, Jean Guy Hilton. As I look forward to seeing you in person as soon as possible. Thank you very Definitely. much for coming on um, today. And we'll see, we, we've got another session tomorrow, haven't we, Jean Guy? Same Absolutely. time, 13, 1300 London time. All Absolutely. the best to both. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Hilton. Thank you very much. Bye. See you in London. Bye. Bye, everybody.